Okay, but now, what have we really gained by understanding in closed form the solutions to these recurrence equations? The, the recurrence itself is good for computational purposes. If you want to know the hundredth value, just compute the first 99 and get the hundredth one from it. Okay, so let's, let's begin. What, what have we gained? Okay, go back to the Fibonacci sequence. Tilings, remember? Tilings, uh, two, using dominoes of the, uh, of the Fibonacci sequence comes up in a bazillion different ways. But as soon as I ask you this term, is the thousandth term more or less than 10 to the 300? Well, I, I, I can answer that. I just calculate the thousandth term and compare it. But that violates my motto. I want to be selectively lazy. I don't want to do that entire calculation. OK, so we're going to do a little bit of work. So the Fibonacci sequence has as its recurrence a squared minus a minus 1 on fn equals 0. Does everybody see why that's the recurrence? Remember, the recurrence is that the next term is the sum of the preceding two. So if you take the second term and subtract the one right in front of it and subtract the one in front of that, you get 0. OK, what are the roots of this? Remember from high school, minus b1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, 1 squared, minus 4ac. Uh, 4 times 1 times minus 1 becomes plus 4 over 2a. OK, so there are two roots, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Uh, how big are these numbers? 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Square root of 5 is 2.2, uh, 2.3, something, something like that. So, uh, you know, half of two point, you know, okay, this is like three point, well, I guess this is like 1.6 something. So, so this is approximately 1.6. I, I don't know what it is. Okay, what is this number? Okay, so uh, square root of 5 is like 2.2. So you subtract it, so you get about minus 1.2 1, 1 divided by 2. So this is somewhere in the vicinity of about minus 0.6. Of course, I could pull up my smartphone and, and get these to seven decimals, maybe more, instantly, right? All right. Now, What's the general solution? The general solution is C1 times 1 plus square root 5 over 2 to the n plus C2 times 1 minus square root 5 over 2 to the n. So the Fibonacci sequence satisfies that. Now, you're supposed to, at this point, say, wait a minute. The Fibonacci sequence is integers. This has got radicals. There are no radicals in the Fibonacci sequence. You start multiplying the square root fives to the end. OK, now what it's going to turn out is that the values of C1 and C2 are in some sense conjugate, and the radicals disappear. So what are the initial conditions? F0, the 0th term in the Fibonacci sequence, if we started at 0, is 1. 
and f of 1, the next term, is also 1. Okay. You tell me what c1 and c2 are. Do that work. Tell me what c1 and c2 are. No, you're supposed to say, I don't want to do that. Do I really have to? Well, you could. Is there anybody here present that could not solve those two equations in those two unknowns? You could do that, right? All right, let's assume that you did. Tell me what you can say about the constant C1. Positive or negative? Or zero. Positive, negative, or zero. Positive. Because look at this. When n is large, when n is large, I don't care what this constant is, this is minus 0 0.6 to the nth power. This term is going to zero. Now, the Fibonacci numbers increase without bound. So this number is positive, so C1 has to be positive. Let me just figure out. Yeah, OK. C1. It's a number. It ain't too big. It ain't too big. It's, it's a number. Now, our question was, what about the thousandth term? The thousandth term is C1 times 1 plus square root 5 over 2 to the thousand. And this other term over here, when, you, when n is a thousand, is nothing. This is the big term. Now, 1 plus square root 5 over 2, we already said it's like 1.6. What's 1.6 cubed? Five? Six? Anybody got your uh, a machine handy? Take, take 1 plus square root 5 over 2 and raise it to the cube power and then raise it to the fourth power. And tell me what the answers are. I, do, I want to see what the little values are so I can estimate what the big ones are. So the challenge is I want to see what 1 plus square root 5 over 2 cubed is, and then I want to see what 1 plus square root 5 over 2 to the fourth is. Uh, if it's cubed? Oh, really? It's, it's smaller than I thought. I said 5. And this one is? Can't be more than like seven. Six point eight five. Okay. So if I raise it to the thousandth power, it's like six point eight five to the two hundred fiftieth. Now, six point eight five to the two hundred fiftieth. Versus 10 to the 3, you know, I can't see my, I've gotten so selectively lazy you can't read my, so I'm comparing 6.85 to the 250th, 1,000 over 4, versus 10 to the 300. Which one's bigger? 
10 to 300. It wins in spades. The C1 is not too big. It isn't going to help it. So the answer is it's much less. That's pretty neat. Saves us a lot of calculation. My, one of my postdocs uh, told me about a saying which I really like. He said, I'll probably get this backwards, that a good day's computation can replace 10 minutes of clear thinking. I, I like that saying. OK. Question. Uh, why was the um, C2 term like just zeroed out? Because it's a small negative number, negative 0.6. Negative 0.6, when you start raising it to power, it, it starts flip-flopping back and forth, positive and negative. But in magnitude, what's it doing? Straight. Going to zero. All right. Now, take the ratio of the nth Fibonacci divided that into the n plus 1. If you were to run an experiment and make these computations, what would the answer be? I don't want you to do it. I just want you to think about it and tell me the answer. It would be 1 plus square root 5 over 2. The C1s would cancel. The other terms would be negligible when n is big. So this ratio goes to that when n is large. So the Fibonacci sequence starts 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. And it goes like that, wiggles. But ultimately, it's looking an awful lot like the simple exponential function, some constant times 1 plus square root 5 over 2 to the nth power. So if you take that nice smooth one, the Fibonacci sequence wiggles a little over it, a little under it forever and converges to it. So you see, by, by getting the closed form expression, we, we are now beginning to understand the quality of a function. What is it really doing? And if you just do a computation, you don't ever see anything. You just see the answers. Okay, good. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>